You're listening to the Exhibitionist Podcast, hosted by Nicola Reader and brought to you by InspiringExhibitors.com and Pro Extra, a wholly owned subsidiary of 12th Man Solutions Limited. Hi there, and welcome to episode 17 of the Exhibitionist, the podcast. Thank you once again for joining us, and it's great to have you listening. So, it has been a frantic few weeks for us over at Pro Extra. Not only did we have the book launch that we were talking to you about on the last show, um, and thank you to everybody who's bought a copy as we managed to land bestseller status in two categories on Amazon, so thank you. But we're also just back in the office today after two weeks back-to-back out on shows. And we will be handing over very shortly to a conversation we had after day one of the Fit Show a couple of weeks ago, with four organisations that were exhibiting at the show and they'll be chatting to us about everything that they were doing in preparation and now that day one had gone live, everything they had wished they had done in preparation. However, before we get to that conversation, we wanted to just share with you some thoughts we had about the difference between B2B and B2C shows as it has become really apparent to us over the last couple of weeks about some of the similarities We often get asked by clients, what do you need to do differently if you're preparing for a direct-to-consumer show versus a direct-to-business show? So the last two weeks, we've seen the best of both of these worlds, and we did a week at the Fit Show, which is the industry-leading event for Windows Doors and Conservatories at the NEC, where we were managing their theatres. So we had 70 speakers across 50 different sessions, but also had a really good opportunity to walk around and see what exhibitors were doing in that industry. Having had three or four days at the NEC, we then headed straight down to Shepton Mallet to the Royal Bath and West Showground, where we were running a team of brand ambassadors on the Lactalis McClellan stand during the Royal Bath and West Show. If you're not aware, Lactalis McClelland are one of the biggest, if not the biggest, dairy company globally. Um, In the UK, they would be known for brands including Seriously Cheese, Orkney Cheddar, and also have some joint interests in products like Rachel's Organic and other Nestle yogurt brands. And that was a direct-to-consumer show where we were actually giving samples to lots and lots of people visiting the show, but also trying to get them to buy some cheese on the day. So there was a sales element to it. Very different shows with very different objectives. So during the Fit Show, when we were talking to exhibitors, they were very much thinking about how did they meet people, build relationships, establish a connection, and understand whether the person, the visitor that they were speaking to, could potentially add value to their business and buy from them in the future. At the Royal Bath and West Show with Lactalis McClelland, it was very much about actually introducing them to some cheeses they may not be aware of, but trying to make a sale on the day and actually trying to sell the two trailer loads of cheese that we had in a cool room out of the back of the show. So what were the similarities and what were the differences? Well, two things for us actually really struck us as being very, very similar, and that's helping to solve problems and leveraging an investment and legacy from the money that you put into an event. So if you take that first one, it's about helping solve problems. And so often, whether you're exhibiting at a B2C or a B2B show, you're thinking about what's important to you, what's the innovation you want to launch, what's the education you want to give somebody, what's the big product that you want to sell this year, and not really thinking about it in the visitor shoes. What do they come into that event for? What do they want to learn? So for example, at the Fit Show, many fabricators were visiting thinking, We need new hardware products. We need to understand what the latest innovations are going to be to help make windows more secure, to help make homes more secure, to make them less noisy. That's actually what consumers are looking for. So the trends in the market are saying that we need our windows to be even better protection for keeping our homes safe, minimizing noise from increased road usage or air uh, air traffic or anything else that's around you, and actually just being quite smart and connected in a way that every other part of our life's been connected. And installers were coming along to that show wanting to know about the latest tools or the latest legislation that they needed to be aware of to keep them ahead of their competitors or keep their installations safe. So they were all coming with a problem that they needed solving and an innovation they were looking for at the show. 
You might think a family of four coming along to a family day out at what is essentially an agricultural show wouldn't have any problems that they needed solving at the Royal Bath and West show. They were just here to see the sheep and the cows and the pigs. And believe me, there were a lot of sheep and cows and pigs. And when you put that many animals in one place, I can still smell it now. But it was a great week. And if you think about some of the problems they might have been coming to the Lactalis McClellan stand for, it could be, I don't actually know how to serve brie. I don't know when I should eat it. Why, when I'm melting my cheese or making cheese on toast, is everything just going a bit floppy? And actually, they were looking for more creative and more inspiring ways to consume cheese, to serve it differently. And that's what they were really interested in. They weren't just there to buy cheese. They were there to have an experience and to be educated and actually find out something new and different. So we were solving a problem there for them about how do they cook a better meal for their family? How do they serve a better cheese board at a dinner party? What's the best cheese to take on a picnic that isn't going to melt for them? Actually, what's the heritage? What's the kind of milk that goes into one cheese versus another? And what does that mean in terms of taste? So they were all problems that they maybe didn't know that they had until they started talking to us. And we were able through the team to talk to them about these are some of the solutions that will make things better for you. So that's one thing that whoever is going to a show, they are looking for some kind of engagement, some kind of entertainment but also something that they can learn and take away and add value and the second thing was about leveraging that investment so we were really surprised at the level of spend on a lot of the stands at the fit show there were some phenomenal stands there were double deckers there were gin bars there were live djs and a huge amount of money had gone into particularly the opening night where the stands were open longer in creating an atmosphere and creating an experience But actually, the stands that seemed to do really well from the feedback from exhibitors we spoke to were those where they really thought about leveraging that investment and the legacy they were leaving. We've spoken to Maco UK on a previous uh, podcast episode, and Mark is part of our panel that we'll be handing over to in a minute. But they'd really thought about what did they want to introduce at the show? How are they going to collect the data from people? And how are they going to follow up that data in a meaningful way? So it might mean that actually they took less leads from this show than they have done at previous events, but they're significantly more valuable leads and ones that they know are meaningful and have the highest potential to add value. They've already done that first phase of filtering, which means they can really hit the ground running on day one back in the office with conversations that they know have the best chance of converting to a sale. And that's the legacy of the investment. And that was true across all of the different exhibitors that we spoke to that had really thought about what's the meaningful conversation we're starting here, not just what's the gin that we're serving or have we got the loudest singer in the room. It was about what's the legacy, where do we go from here? And in two years' time, how will we look back and think, yep, Fit Show 2019 really was the catalyst to the next stage in our journey. Likewise, at the Royal Bath and West Show, there were lots of exhibitors Um, in the gift and food area, where they were hoping not just to make their money back on the day, on the the investment in the stand and the stock, but also in terms of how can they build relationships with people for the future. So, for example, there was a fantastic jewellery stall, and I might have purchased a couple of pieces from there. Really great team there. They sold them on the day, but they also had a card that gave you a special code for having been at the Royal Bath & West Show, for all internet purchases in the next 12 months from the show. So that's building that legacy that doesn't just say, I'm going to spend £25 or £50 on a piece of jewellery on that day. It means I'm going to keep going back to that, that site over the next 12 months because I've now got a unique code for me that gives me a discount. Equally working with our client like Tal is thinking about their legacy for the future. It wasn't just about let's introduce people to Brie or Camembert for the day. Let's talk about a brand and the heritage and and the milk and the cheese coming from the Somerset region and how do we actually get people to buy into the cheese category and maybe widen the portfolio of of varieties of cheese that they would eat 
beyond the show itself. It's not just about them trying it that one day and then never buying it again. It's about trying to establish this legacy for the future and really leveraging that distribution and those sales beyond just that one day. So people often think that B2B and B2C shows you approach very differently and one is about driving revenue and one's about actually building relationships. And in some ways, people would be right. There's no black and white answer to one's one thing and one's the other. But I think the real commonalities around these two shows are that wherever you're exhibiting, whichever event you're investing in, you're helping to solve somebody's problem through entertainment, education, and adding value. And it might be a problem they don't even necessarily know they have before they come and speak to you. And secondly, it's about really successful execution is being able to leverage that value and that investment beyond the one day. It doesn't stop when the show closes at five o'clock on the final day. It's about what have we got in place to make sure that everything we've done in the run-up to that show, not just the money, but the time and the effort and the energy, actually leads to something meaningful that builds the business beyond just this one marketing tactic. So we have had a fantastic, if slightly shattering, couple of weeks, half a day back in the office, and I already cannot wait to get back on the show floor for Global Exhibitions Day tomorrow at Auto Mechanica in Birmingham. So we look forward to seeing you there. We're going to hand over now to that conversation that I mentioned we'd had with some of the Fit Show exhibitors with some great value advice in there about how they've prepared for, for their event. So we hope you enjoy the show. So on this week's episode of the Exhibitionist podcast, we are delighted to be recording this live from the Fit Show in Birmingham. And we have a fantastic panel of exhibitors here who've been having a great first day at the show. And I wanted to share, wanting to share with you their thoughts on what's gone well so far and what they're looking forward to. Um, we have maybe had a, a little drink of beer to celebrate our first day, so we're going to have some fun on this one most definitely. But I'll start by introducing the panel to you. I'm going to hand over to our previous panellist, our previous guest on the show. So Mark, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Mark Enderby. I'm the marketing exec at Maco UK. We're a premium window and door hardware supplier for the fenestration industry here in the UK. Brilliant. Thank you, Mark. And we're now on to Amy. Hi, my name is Amy Jansen and I am the marketing and projects manager for the Boing Boing Group, which is uh, Central RPL, Central ASL and, and Colour Seal Midlands. Well done. Uh, quite a mouthful, but well done and welcome to the show. Um, so thanks, Amy. We're next on to Charlotte. Yeah, um, I'm the head of marketing for EdgeTech UK um, with also responsibility in kind of the Asia, Asia Pacific and South Africa to get around it. Brilliant, and uh, yeah, sounds like nice travel. Um, and then we've got a, a duo, the, the famous two appearing for us from um, Alutech. So we've got uh, Steve and we've got Becky. So if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Uh, so I'm Steve Hudson, and I'm the founder also of the 2CV Challenge, <laughs> uh, which is uh, a charity to raise £100,000 for dementia, driving an old car back from the French Alps. Fantastic. We'll hear more about that in the show, no doubt, sure. definitely. And, and Becky? Um, I'm Becky Taylor, and I do the marketing for Alitech Systems and JD UK, uh, which is a systems house and garage, aluminium systems house and garage door supplier in the UK. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, welcome to all our panel. And I have to say, having been speaking to Becky for the last couple of weeks, I'm from not far away from where Becky works, and it's just been lovely every time to hear that Yorkshire <laughs> accent that I don't really have quite as much anymore. So... Um, so again, I'm going to start with you, Mark, just to ease everybody in gently to this one. But um, so thinking back maybe 12, 18 months ago when you first decided to exhibit at a fit show, what were you as an organisation thinking you wanted to achieve? What were your objectives? What was the reason for investing in the show? Yeah, it's a really good question. This year, for the first time at this, this exhibition, we actually set out quite a um, really good plan of objectives that we wanted to achieve out of the show. The big one was mainly around our product launch. We launched a new product at the show today, the Mark V Telescopic X-Bag, and a lot of it focused around that, and that's gone spectacularly today. And again, around a few of the other products, including our automatic door lock, our panorama lift and slide, as well as a few other things. And we actually set objectives around marketing in terms of branding. So we had our key messages of creating innovation that we wanted to make sure we talked to the media partners about. And we bring some really exciting concepts that we wanted to make sure that everyone got to see those and know about those. So that was really important this time around. So 
mainly innovation for, for you. And Amy, how about your organisation? I'm going to say it, a big, innovation is a big one for us. There's so much exciting stuff happening in the industry. Um, and for us specifically, we're working um, along with the Smart Ready smart windows and doors and we've also created a marketing portal because uh, it's incredibly important for us um, to be able to see our customers succeed and, and for them to do that they need to have all of the tools that they can possibly lay their hands on. So we've launched Central Hub this year and that was that was a, a huge focus for us is so that we can engage with our current customers and to educate them and to show them what is available. Brilliant. And that's really interesting because so often we hear from clients that we work with that exhibitions are all about just new and trying to see new people. So interesting to hear from you that it's actually existing customers and trying to help them succeed. It's those relationships that, that make our business succeed. And, and if we haven't engaged with them properly, we're not doing our job. The product is almost secondary for us. It's that customer intimacy that we're able to achieve. And so offering them tools like the Central Hub it, um, yeah, it, it just means that it, everybody wins. That ties into a big thing of um, why we do exhibitions as well, because in our kind of area of the industry, there's 860 companies tops that we can go out to. So we've either had conversations with them already, they know us. So we're, if, we've, if we're meeting someone for the first time at an exhibition, we've done something wrong, because, you, yeah. because we should know everybody there. It's not about kind of this um, kind of gathering new contacts for us. It's more about reconnecting with the ones that we've got and showing them kind of the new things that we have to offer now. So we were launching um, a new product today, um, a new Bridges Space Bar. We we're also launching some um, launching some new um, services for customers. So again, going down that kind of digital route, the same as Amy. So we've got kind of a new inspection system, which our technical guys can use out on the roads to kind of help people support their quality. Um, and then a new e-commerce system as well that we were launching. So we were able to demonstrate that live on stand and show people just how easy it is to use. Um, because a lot of our customers have kind of expressed an interest in it, but they were like, it needs to be simple and that. So we were able to let them get kind of hands on with it today and, and really experience it before they kind of commit to that time to get to know the system. So it's really good. Brilliant, and it is. It's just so refreshing to hear people saying we want to meet some some existing contacts. And yeah. so often, especially in my role, you you hear about customers, you speak to them on phones and emails, but it's that face to face that I certainly I miss. Yeah, I think. and so it's a real joy to be able to shake their hands and see them. Yeah, up close. Mm. And you guys from Ali Tech, what were you thinking your objectives were for being here? I'm just going to talk about the two CV challenge. Well, I'm, so I'm from an Ali Tech system point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, it, I sort of joined the team uh, seven months ago, um, having with Fit Show already quite well underway. Mm -hmm. um, but in the two years that uh, Ali Tech had previously appeared at Fit Show, there'd been a lot of growth, a lot of rapid growth in terms of the portfolio, the customer base, um, raising brand awareness. Uh, so I think a lot of that was to, a lot about Fisher this year was bringing that all together um, to show the, the progress uh, and uh, the journey that the company had been on. Um, but definitely to engage with existing customers still, um, new customers is relevant to us because We've, uh, we've not yet met everybody, but there's definitely been an acknowledgement of, um, of what we're, the, of our presence and um, our offer. Uh, so it's bringing all that together. But I think the main part of it was really just to uh, present how, uh, the, the difference in what we offer in terms of what, our other customers might be used to um, from from the industry or from uh, other suppliers. So that was it was a lot about communicating the personality and culture of the company. Right. Um, and to do that, I think face to face is still so important. Um, even you know you can use online tools, but still putting a face to the company um, and having that sort of personal engagement. That, that is fun as well as as uh, talking about product uh, is still so important and you can do that all at an exhibition. 
Well, I think the cultures and the values bit of the business is the kind of integral part then for the 2CB challenge. So the 2CB challenge is, as I mentioned earlier, is me driving back from the Alps in the middle of winter next year um, and doing a, lazy, a load of crazy bets and challenges on the way back to be able to raise that kind of money. And, and I chose that way of doing it rather than the corporate way of sponsorship and what have you, because within our business life and our day-to-day -day life, it's very much about culture and values that you talked about and, and injecting a bit of fun, injecting a bit of humility into what it is that we do and challenging some of the kind of mediocrity of supply that can exist somewhere within the uh, within the industry. And, and they're then quite well aligned. And I think the joy for me is just standing by the car on the stand and just seeing people stop and look at it and say, what's that doing there? What are you hoping to achieve by that? We thought we were going to come and see some windows. And then you get talking to them and the engagement because it's, it's just a bit different. It's just mm -hmm. a little bit crazy. And then people go away and somebody else comes along and talks about it and says, what do you tell me about it? And then you talk then about aluminium and why we do aluminium as well. So marries up well, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's, it's been brilliant. It's people brilliant. tend to like stories, don't they? They yeah. engage with it. And I can imagine that yeah. seeing a, a car on the stand that opens and door Trojo isn't what they're expecting. We've got a giraffe on ours. That <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 A, a giraffe. real yeah. giraffe? Uh, unfortunately, no. Then she had another show, so we've got to stand <laughs> Um, but it is, people come up and they ask questions, yeah. and especially when it is for a good cause, we're, um, we're raising funds for GM fundraising in Hope House. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so we're from um, Russia with love, and they're cycling. Yes. Was it 10 countries in, no, 12 countries in 10 days, and I just, my fitness level just freaks out of that, and I'm only talking about it. Yeah. But, so there's a team of them, but it is, once you've got that engagement, and they, they've engaged with your story and your cause, it's very quite easy to then talk about what else you're doing on the They're actually much more interested. And they are because in they're personally what happens yes. with you as an individual, I think. And, uh, because they can see that the culture and the ethics behind your yeah. business yeah. is human. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it works. And that's it's again a really important point for anyone who's listening, just thinking about how do you go beyond your brand and beyond your product to think about how you actually bring your people and your team and their personalities through in what you're talking about because that's what people want to see they can find out about the tech specs or lead times or any of those kind of things on a website but what is it that you can bring to your stand that's exactly you and I also think it's really important to remember as a company that you are a member of a community mm -hmm. and that it's ignorant and arrogant to stand in your community without engaging and giving back mm -hmm. and so it's really lovely to see how many socially aware companies we have mm -hmm. here yeah, yeah absolutely so that's all brilliant in terms of all the things that you were looking forward to and what you were hoping to achieve from the show. Anything anybody was really nervous or anxious about when they started their planning? What, what was scaring you? So we had a new group corporate design um, that was, was applied across Maco after a lot of research. It was done feedback from customers to try and make our brand more relatable to them, which of course is really important. And we were the first country of, of groups take it to an exhibition so it was quite nerve-wracking to, to launch that that new design and get the feedback from our customers which has been amazing which has, has been the best part of the show so far everyone's come on going, i love the new look it, it, it suits it makes us feel better about us as using maco as well it's improved the brand even further and we we're fortunate we're, we're quite well known but it's you've got to keep it at that level and we've always got to push the boundaries and and make sure that we take our partners and our customers with us. So for us, it was taking all this new stuff and making sure it was still relatable to them, which it has been. So that's been a real success out of the nerves that come beforehand. Brilliant. It's been good. How about anybody else? Any other scary moments? Or Well, if I can speak from a personal <laughs> place, I, Tom, I'm not going to get too deep in. <laughs> no, I, um, this is my first trade show ever, ever. Um, in fact, I'm not from the penetration industry, so I was, my nervousness came from whether or not as project lead I'd be able to, in a way that suited, I mean, my project management and event management has all been in the music industry and sort of theatre because I, I'm an opera singer and so when I come to the penetration industry, you sort of like, oh, this is something completely different. So like, one of them was, I don't know about stand design. I, Thankfully, we have a fantastic group, um, a company that we're working with. But yeah, but 
like you say, from a company point of view, it is how are your customers going to relate to what you're bringing them. So for you, it was really the whole package. It's it, like, where it, do I start really, with oh, this? Yeah, I was yeah wow, that is really a real <laughs> change of industry there. Yes. yes, it is massive. But what I find is that it's really lovely that you've got transferable skills, Yeah, actually. An industry has similar components. It's just got a different wrapping or a different product that you're selling. So, yeah, so personally, yeah, it's really lovely to be able to open the stand and it work and, and yeah. for it all to flow smoothly, mostly. Yeah. But and yeah. then also again to be confirmed, have that conversation exactly the customers, isn't it? that what you're doing is mm. going to help them that they can use it that they can relate to it exactly yeah. and also pass it on um, in a way that makes sense for them so yeah yeah and Charlotte anything for you that was keeping you awake at night and I was working with a new stand builder and so it's always like however many like I've done yes. quite a few exhibitions like in my time now so it's like so that side of it wasn't new but it's kind of every exhibition is kind of different and has its own challenges and working with a new stand builder you're not really sure like all the conversations up to it were going well and the stand design looked great but it was until it's actually there kind of like you don't really know do you and um fortunately it was absolutely brilliant, kind of best one so far um, with um, how kind of quickly they got things together and the quality. So so thankfully my nerves were kind of unfounded. Um, but um, yeah, I think however long you've been doing it for, like there's always something that's thrown at you. But, um, but yeah, I know it's gone really well this time. So all good. And just on that point, how did you choose a new stand design? Because it's a really difficult one to change from something yeah. you've been using with and you've been happy. So we always put together a brief so that we're like, really clear up front with what we need to get out of it um, so there's kind of delivering on the brief um, delivering on kind of um, the creative aspect of it is a really big thing for us we're like um, we've had some some amazing stands over the years so it's kind of we really need our stands to kind of deliver that wow factor to kind of make it stand out um, and so it's the ones that can kind of come up with the new concept for that year um, and um, yeah they, they did a great job it was a really clean design which isn't something that we've gone for before um, but they kind of came up with a good design they had the credentials to back it up like um, they could kind of point to lots of different stands that we would seen over the years um, they're a local company which means that I could go down and see it being built and um, so that kind of gives you the confidence that things are going well and if you need to have those kind of meetings then it's very easy to kind of do so um, yeah so I think that's the main thing for us, creativity, being local, and then having the kind of stands they can point to that back that up. So, yeah. And you guys, from you take anything that was keeping you awake at night? Personally, <laughs> again, um, it was uh, being relatively new to the company and coming in sort of halfway through plans already, um, with it, with it being six months ago, things were already been very generous, though, underway. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm, I, <laughs> you are sat here, so I am. I think the thing that the, the, the 2CV challenge evolved during the time, it, over the last six months, while we were making final preparations, and we really, so we had to adapt because we realised how... Um, core it was to what we were doing and what we stood for as well uh, so to build that in and, and adapt plans and evolve plans at such a sort of um, final stage shall I say so we and had to it. yeah and we um, it, so that has the, the last couple of months have been quite uh, intense um, and then just sort of hoping that it, it all came together but it did. So. And for me the only real worry was trying to get the car here because <laughs> it blew up a few weeks ago so we had to put a new engine in and then I got it back the day before I needed to drive it down and I couldn't get a transporter to bring it so I drove it with just fingers and everything else crossed and it got here. Yeah. So flown. That's reassuring for yeah. the Alps home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's kind of 100 miles to 1,300 miles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> easy. No, no, no thing. How is it getting to the Alps? What a challenge there is. How does how's the car get into the Alps? And I'm either going to drive it, but okay. more than likely I'll either get somebody else to drive it or get it transported there because uh, otherwise it's another week out of my life that I need to be doing something else with. But yeah. 
she seems to be going okay, so we keep just kind of patting the flow and just saying, come on, just carry on, carry on, it'll be okay. So as soon as she got here and, and then the stand just got built around us, so yeah, it was okay. She's very important though, and I don't think she realises that of all the she's work she did there, yeah. and then the whole stand, 12 by 12, just was constructed around yeah. her. She's a lucky girl. Yeah. <laughs> So we're sitting here at the end of day one, um, and from what everybody's saying, it's been a, a successful day so far. But any surprises that anyone's had today so far? We've got lots of shaking heads. No. So I think I was pleasantly surprised. Not surprised, but um, I think it, I was it hoping the seminar was a success. Uh, Steve opened the seminar program this morning. Um, the first seminar in the Discovery Theatre of the first day of the Fit Show. Um, we've obviously supported. And we had people turn up. And we had people turn up. So. Well, let's put, let's put that into context. Before Steve went on stage, he said, "Are we happy if there's six in the crowd?" And we got forty-three. Yeah. So. Really yeah. So I think that sort of set set the tone for the rest of the day. Then um, I think I always knew that once that seminar was over that I'd, I'd relax but not the, it wasn't just the fact that the, the seminar was over it was that it had been such a success and a culmination of all all our work leading up to it mm -hmm. so I think that was you know a good way to start the day Fabulous. <laughs> and it's worth mentioning at this point actually Steve it's um it's an interesting one because your seminar wasn't on windows and doors really was it it was more around Kind of marketing and support and yeah. so for you as a senior member of your business mm -hmm. what was your thought process behind this is the seminar we want to deliver that was entirely your choice for the, the content sure. so how did you go about deciding what topic you're going to speak about we, we certainly thought about all of the products and what have you but products are an innate thing that everybody's got we think we've got something slightly different in the sense of the, the culture and the beliefs that we have and it was an attempt to try and just get a little bit over of that to people. Not, a, not about us at all. It was more about this is what we believe in as a business and the way that a business should be run. And it was then just sharing those with people. And if they just find a little bit of it useful, then that's fantastic. And the guy that I spoke with is a really good digital marketing guy who talks in plain English. Mm -hmm. And I could see people in the audience just nodding. They said, actually, we understand what this guy's talking about. And it was, uh, that was fabulous. It was really, really good. It was a pleasure to see people nodding rather than going to sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a few laughs as well. Be more like the hedgehog. I liked that. That's good, yeah. Was Be that more Jim, like the hedgehog. Jim, I missed Jim like Collins. that seminar. So. Uh, yeah. And Jim, Jim Collins, one of the authors of whatever it was, Good to Great, I think it was, is that one of his beliefs is that you can be like the, the fox that's good at all sorts of things and is going out hunting whatever it can find and the hedgehog's only good at one thing and that's just crawling up into a little ball to repel people like the fox. So in a way, stay with what you're good at was the uh, one of the theories that, that Dan, the guy that helped me with that seminar, did. Brilliant. Good. Yeah. And um, any other surprises from anybody else? Anything pleasantly or, or <laughs> that you kind of wish you'd maybe anticipated? A pleasant surprise was how um, how willing to engage the guests or, and, and the visitors of the show were. There, um, I don't know what I was expecting. With a sort of, oh, actually, I think maybe I was expecting it to be like when you walk into a clothing shop and someone's like, "Hi guys, can we have you?" Like, no thanks. We just like to look. Whereas today, people wanted to ask questions. They wanted to know what you were showing and, and what you had to offer. And um, and yeah, so that was that was really enjoyable. The other thing that I've discovered is that people really like to steal pens. <laughs> like, we hadn't got any, we we've got lots of other things to give away, but I've now resorted to putting my pen in my back pocket because it's the last one I've got. And it's only day one. <laughs> See, I heard that yours then was the worst for going around and stealing pens. I don't pens. know what you're <laughs> talking about. There's a pen <laughs> collecting <laughs> challenge from your stand. All right, so, so we may have been the that we may have retaliated. <laughs> I don't think it was quite initiated, but retaliated when we lost all oh, our pens. See. So it's more of a, a regathering, well, a re-henning re yeah. re of our stance. See, it wasn't painted to me. <laughs> that makes sense, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. We've got pen wars happening at the show. We could get the most pens, but that I don't feel was uh, <laughs> completely separate. <laughs> 
we're going to come in tomorrow morning there's just going to be a mountain of stolen we'll, pens yeah, we'll we'll like, oh, pen and we're ready for day two come and get everybody else's pens mine's in my pocket though <laughs> <laughs> so apart from going out and buying a lot more pens yes, tonight so that you've yeah. got spare ones slash gathering them from just yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's in store for all of you guys tomorrow what are you changing based on what you've learned today what is anything you're thinking about doing differently? Um, no, as far as we're concerned, we're quite happy with kind of how everything's gone. It's all been really smooth. So I like I say that and then touch wood, but everything's kind of gone gone to plan. So yeah, we we're expecting a lot more visitors tomorrow. So while this today we've kind of had times when people can kind of get off and and that, and we've been able to kind of take breaks to keep the stand staff kind of um, refreshed. And that tomorrow's going to be a, take a little bit more managing in order to be able to kind of get people off the stand when they need to have a break and that. So because. Sense. Oh, sorry. No. I was going to say, today's yeah. felt like a really lovely warm-up. Yeah. 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 You know, you've been able to get comfortable on the stand, yeah. get comfortable yeah. in the environment. I mean, we all know our products. We all know what. But it is different doing it somewhere else. Yeah. With other people around and with all the other noises and you're sharing a space. And so, sort of, yeah, warmed up and ready to go for tomorrow. And as there's a lot more people. To, exactly. It's going to be busy. You need to have that time. Yes. Everyone's kind of got familiar with it. The dress so, rehearsal. Yeah. Done. <laughs> And are anybody changing their shoes tonight for a more sensible pair? Yeah. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad I've These changed. Things are the we've, most got, things we've got slip-on converse. Oh, that's, so, the, um, that's the so trend. I was told that converses are the best shoes ever as long as you put a new insole in. Well, that's the bit of information. Cowboy. 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 Yeah. yeah, Charlotte's yeah. in heels. Well, I mean, the letters, I probably, yeah. <laughs> I remember doing one. exhibitions in heels, and when the converse was suggested, it was like brilliant. It's better, yeah. 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 <laughs> I've just noticed a genius thing. So I love my slip on converse, uh, but they're about seven years old and falling apart, and I can't get any more slip on converse from anywhere. But you've just taken the laces out of yours. Boom. No, they and are they become, slip on. Are they, are they actual yeah. slip ons? I thought you just taking the laces out. Yeah, no. They're no. very cool. <laughs> they're still, the the back, the back. We all did, um, well, Holly, she's, I mean, obviously, we're sat here talking about it now, but there's a, a, a team of us that has worked really hard on uh, putting the exhibition together and the fact that everybody's been able to have their own creative input into it um, is kind of representative of how we work at Ali Tech anyway, isn't it? That, mm. that we are all quite individual and everybody's been allowed to bring a bit of that. So when we said, let's wear Converse, everybody was just straight away on board. Yeah. Yeah, and then Holly made it happen. <laughs> that's, what, that's generally what happens. Absolutely, yeah. Holly and, and again, it. it's all linked in with the car, and so the car's blue, so mm -hmm. that's why we're in the attire that we're in, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So. And it's, um, it's interesting to hear you talk about including the team and, and them yeah. being part of it. And Mark, I know um, we've done some work with with you and um, we yeah. had a session where your team set the rules for how yeah. they were all going to behave on the stand, which was quite an interesting yeah. experience. And it's funny, this morning, a few of the guys started flexing those rules a little bit as well even I went round and I went to a uh, head of sales went in grouping and he went oh no <laughs> so, so I quite enjoyed flexing those but it, I think as I said it's been a nice warm up day and I think everyone is prepped for tomorrow as being the busier day out of the three so we've got loads of pens so <laughs> that's, one that's one thing that's one thing we said today is we haven't given away enough giveaway bags so we've got a surplus still from today so if anyone wants a pen ours come with notepads ours come with notepads as well so come over we've got loads. a notepad and a pen and I am pen. definitely yeah. the Maco stands for you go <laughs> you mentioned the team and how important that is yes. the um, we started we started it uh, with Central Africa and ASL. We started looking at this in December of last year. And it's through that team mm -hmm. contribution and team work that we've been able to get here. And I couldn't imagine doing it without no. everybody. You know, and, and we have, and Gary, our CEO, is, is, hasn't, and everybody else on the team, I mean, we've had you know, 
weekly meetings, certainly in the last little while, and it's it's really reassuring when you get onto the stand with a group of people that are as, as invested as everybody else is. Yeah, there. everyone we, steps up. Exactly, everyone steps and, up. Really. And it's it's oh, so we're all we're all working, but it doesn't feel like hard work. Because it's a lovely feeling, isn't it's it? Really that you can really be proud of what that team you've done to it, and yeah, it's, you can it's feel it. Team it's, it's, it's yeah. true. No, it, it is. Fun. Everyone steps up their game. Everyone's been involved. It's it's been great. And like you said, everyone has an input that is is worthy. I think mm. everyone sees something different from a different perspective. And I think when you bring it all together, actually, it, yeah, it's spot on every time. And Pete and the visitors to your stand see that. Feed they feel that. it. Yeah. They feed off it. And yes. yeah, definitely. And you can rely on everybody else on the stand. That if you're busy talking to somebody else, you know that. Oh, you know, whoever's going to be able to say, yeah, actually, yeah. I can speak to you about this while we're waiting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, and have you got any other questions? And it's yeah. all just yeah. organic. Mm-hmm. It sounds fantastic. We've got a really engaged group of people because I mean, we do exhibitions week in, week out, all over the place. And you go around a few and there's people stood there on the phones or they're eating or they're grouping or they're, you know, just... But you guys all sound like you've really got stuck in and been approaching visitors and starting those conversations. So... This is the kind of enthusiasm yeah. that, that we buzz off from at exhibitions, but you don't get it in every industry. You definitely. only get out what you put in, don't you? Yeah. Exactly. You can sit on the stand with going with your back to people or like give you vibes like you know, and like those people that are quiet and you kind of see the difference in the stands, don't you? And I think visitors can kind of pick up on that. Yeah, sure. and yeah it, it kind of looks it looks like a group of people they want to be involved with and Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That looks like it's a cool place to spend some time and and chat to people. I think it's testament to what they've done with the Fit Show brand themselves. Um, I remember the first Fit Show and and actually they set their stall out right from the start. Um, And and credit to Fit Show as well as the the industry that have then embraced it and got behind Fit Show and understood the concept of it and they've sort of run with it. And because of that, then you do get that the atmosphere that everybody's there to for the same thing, with the same thing in mind and a very similar attitude. And I think visitors must be uh, drawn to that. They must It must be hard for them not to join in the, the spirit of that. Mm. I think it feels like very much a celebration of the industry. And yeah. I think companies go into it wanting their stand to be a celebration of them and their people. Yeah. And that and that's what it, it all combines together to be really successful event. Yeah. And is that the same for you the guys? What does the fit show mean to this industry? What Yeah, like you say, it's grown over the years. I think everyone resonates with, with the brand. It is a build up. I think it sort of goes back to what we were saying earlier on about putting you know, you've got to be jolly. Everyone, our customers and our partners, they make the effort. It's business days, they come in from work, they're not in the factory, they're not in the office, they're coming to the fit show. Yeah. You you gotta you you got you gotta be happy you gotta be jolly you gotta give them hundred and ten percent because they've made the effort to come and I think that is because of the Fit Show brand and all the exhibitors jump on board with it as well so I think it is like I said it's the spirit of fit almost the whole industry from customers and partners to the exhibitors and everyone has to play their part for it to all come together and work as well as it does. I think as well, like as an industry, we saw an exhibition die, like we saw Glass X finish and then we felt kind of the pain of not having a show for our industry. So I think we all feel invested in making this this show work because we don't want that again. Like we need to have a forum to be able to get out and, and speak to people. So we all have to take ownership of making this work so that we don't see it die off like the last one. Interesting. Interesting. So it's three days and it's going to be a packed three days. Hopefully you're going to have some great conversations. We're going to get people interested in the, the 2CV challenge. We're going to get people looking at new products, innovations. So what do we all do come Friday when you're back in the office? How do you keep all this goodwill going? How are you all going to extend the longevity of your investment past it's Thursday? It's communication with the people that we make. It's making sure that we have conversations with them in a personal way rather than just sort of, you know, saying sending out stock emails or something like that. It's having names, it's having um, notes about the conversations you had because then again it makes them makes the customers, potential customers feel as if you've connected with them. So I know for me a really big thing that our, our and so I should say for our team 
the big thing is is making sure that we've connected, reconnected with the perspective. We've reconnected with the perspective customers. <laughs> that seems difficult. <laughs> it's just been a long day. <laughs> is there anybody else? How are we going to keep it going past the? I think it is. It's a big investment from, as I said, from our customers and partners to come along as well as the exhibitors. And I've certainly, I've seen loads of cameras around. I think it's about, it is, sounds cheesy, but it is follow up, follow up, follow up from a personal level. But it's as well as making as much content this week when our partners are with us face to face, which is so important, on our stand with our brand, interacting with different products, with our people. And bringing it all together and giving it that longevity that it needs is follow up, but making it personal. Mm -hmm. It's using all this content. We're going to be imagery, videos, brochures for the next six months, yeah. if not longer. It's using it again. It's not never talking about the fit show after the day. Never using an image of the fit show. Mm -hmm. um, we're all you know, product based, and again, those products won't die, and we can go look. You come onto the stand, we've used the word, we've hijacked Connect and called Macinect. You come to the stand, you, you, we've made a, a Macinection, if you like, and, and then it, this continue it and always relate back to this is, you saw it at the Fit Show, we had this discussion at the Fit Show, and hopefully it'll bring it back to a good memory when they, they come to stand there with happy or smiley faces, and I think that's what it's all about. Along with the people that we've connected with on the stand, it's also... Mac yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to make it a thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Along with the Mac connections that uh, <laughs> here we go, I'm probably going to lose my job. You can record that. <laughs> Just loop that round and round. That's it. Just loop that's, that. That's that. the 30 minutes. Yeah. That's it. So everyone can say it as well. Your voice is drop out. It is um, it's the team debrief that I think is going to be really important mm. because each of us have gone out and connected with other businesses in the industry and spoken to them and, and observed what other companies are doing and how they're approaching it. And so we have the opportunity to have a conversation about how we move forward based on what we've learned at the show. So it's, um, it's a really fantastic opportunity to expand and, and innovate and, um, and just explore where we can, where we can go. I think that's definitely the case for us as well. I was never looking at Fit Show as a, a, a three-day event. Um, it's always sort of been six months pre-Fit Show, six mm. months post-Fit Show, and the so Fit Show effectively becomes a full year. Um, and so it is a lot about the, the follow-up. Obviously, we've got the... We'll be gearing up towards uh, the... 2CV challenge next year um, and the company will that has been part of our fit show campaign so that will be continue to, to be something that we follow up um, and just echoing what you've said um, I was reprimanded yesterday <laughs> by Paul um, our general manager because all I was talking about was um, I, I I wanted that to be different. Um, I'm going to follow up on that. I'm going to speak to them about that. I'm going to. And Paul said, nobody, nobody knows how it was supposed no, to be. Gosh. Stand back and look what we've achieved, and um, and you know, pause that, revisit it. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm already saying, right, so we need a meeting about processes. And <laughs> it's like, hang on a minute, we, we've not even. Not it's, the, it, it's the night before the show. We've not even. And actually, by the end of the show, those revisions that you may have wanted to have made... I must have admit, yeah, I'm a oh, like much well, more relaxed yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah you are. Right. It becomes an organic thing in the end, yeah. and you just sort of have to allow it to do its thing. Yeah. And I think for the 2CV challenge, it's really the start of the journey now. Absolutely, yeah, is, that's this true. This the big exposure. This We've is the talked launch. about it a lot. And, and now people are starting just to live it a little bit and yeah. breathe it a little bit. Yeah. So we've got so much work to do yeah. with all of the media that's going to surround that and there's all of the people that want to get involved in us to help us publicise it and to, some people that are going to come along with us and, and be able to do it. So that's going to be quite exciting. And we've got two product launches as well. <laughs> Later in the year. We need another podcast. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll
we'll King will back and repeat we'll episode. Back that we'll and, uh, follow up. and if anybody wants any little giveaways, yeah. we've got these little stress cards. I really <laughs> wish that I brought. I just love it. How many of these have we got? A thousand still? Yeah, well, so. no. No, five So the like macro stand for the pen yeah. and the Alitex yeah. stand for the cards. For the cards, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. And we ended up throwing them at people That's when they were you. walking past. It's a catch. The amount of people are just go, oh, and they've caught it, and that's brilliant. I'm like, <laughs> so I am conscious um, that you guys have had a yeah. really, really yeah. long day and uh, it's <laughs> definitely time for you to go get some food and a beer. So we're going to wrap up um, fairly quickly, but I just want to ask one question. Um, we'll start with Mark again. Sorry, just in case uh, you caught my eye. Um, um, if you could go to any exhibition in any industry in the world, where would you go? I'm going to give a really boring answer. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay, go um, on. There's... Uh, this cool thing's called the Body Expo. It's like a health and fitness expo on a couple of weeks ago here at the NEC. And the only reason I really want to go to it is I'm obsessed with the program SAS Who Dares Wins. <laughs> and the guys from there have created a, a, a like a body camp thing you can go to for the weekend. I don't know why I want to do it, but I just want to go and get shattered at by ex SAS soldiers and <laughs> get told to jump down things and shoot guns and stuff um, and get interrogated. And they have a, a, a mini. Like experience at that exhibition, and I missed it this year, so I'm going to go next year. Wow. Well, you, you've you've totally thrown me there because I thought you were going to say the sock show. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I, do, I, do, I don't know if they do one. If they do one, I'm there. Market socks, socks is another podcast. Episode. Episode. Oh, we'll, get, we'll get into that later. I love spend too much money on yeah. socks. Mark <laughs> his socks and his dog eating the socks. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. A whole other episode. It's a whole other episode. Yeah. <laughs> um, Amy, your dream exhibition. I think that, and I realise it's not industry, but I would probably move into Glyde Ball. I'd set up a tent in the garden where they wouldn't notice me and um, just be there for the for the productions that they put on. They put on such a beautiful range of, of gorgeous, gorgeous performances. So I do that. That's your yeah, dream event. That's me, yeah. Brilliant. Tenting at Glyde Ball, probably <laughs> not the normal, but yeah. Brilliant. And Charlotte, what would, where would you go? Um... Anywhere where you could kind of combine like really good food and wine, probably like somewhere in Italy, like yeah, that would be the perfect one. Maybe some outdoor music. Like, yeah. Can I yeah. come to that one with you? I'll like carry yeah. a bag yeah. or yeah. you know, yeah. I'll do anything. Yeah. Like right now, I could just, just take you there now. Yeah, yeah. Do you fancy the SAS Marine? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or tenting. Oh, wow. no, it was an opening part. It was an opening part. It would know into what I want to be glamping. So maybe okay. choose a one. Oh, in a posh tent. In a posh tent. Yeah. yeah. Still no excess so, soldiers at just, 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 yeah. 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 We'll glamp in Italy with yeah. the cheese and the wine and some, and some classical music. Sounds perfect. Done, guys. Let's yeah. 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 yeah, Steve, what about yourself? Where would you I think go? My favourite exhibition is the Canton Fair now in Shanghai because there's just everything there. Anything you ever want to go for, and you just get lost. And you just end up buying all sorts of stuff that you never ever thought you'd want or need. And you don't, but it's just a fun event. Brilliant. Love it. Brilliant. And Becky, Leslie, for you. I, I think it would have to be something that involved a lot of live music. I mean, I think it would be a bit tenuous to say that to say that a music festival <laughs> was an exhibition. <laughs> but I think for the... They're all for, exhibitionists. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. you can say... <laughs> An exhibition of different people's music. So I'd probably say it'd be a music festival, maybe Burning Man. <laughs> Very nice. If we're doing a wish list dream yeah. scenario. Yeah. And the reason for asking you that is just to try and give that sense of what's getting you excited and what do you want to go and see. And hopefully the people listening will think, yeah, that's what I want to create on my stand. That's There's going to be somebody that's as excited about coming to my show on my stand. So thank you to everyone who's been here tonight. You've been absolutely amazing. We're going to do a quick whiz around the table. So Mark, uh, you're going to be back in the office at the end of this week. And if people want to get in touch with you, how will they do that? So you can find us at www.macouk.net or our Twitter handle is UKMaco. Brilliant. And Amy, how do people find you? Or the aluminium, that will be centralasl.co.uk or the PVCU um, side of the business is centralrpl.co.uk and then our social handles are at centralrpl or at centralasl. Thank you. And Charlotte? Um, so we're edgetechog.co.uk or on Twitter we're at edgetechuk. Perfect. And Steve, how do people help support you on your challenge? 
So what is it? Hashtag 2CV challenge. Hashtag the 2CV challenge. Thank you, corrected. <laughs> and if anybody wants any more details about how to get involved with helping Steve, then get in touch and we can pass some details. And you can all that. learn how Steve's going to be fueling this 2CV dressed as a... Well, you explain what you're dressing as every time you go for fuel. So one of my friends said to me, I'll give you 250 quid if you'll dress up as a French maid no. every time I film <laughs> So for me, it's a really easy bet. So I'm just glad he's not in the car with me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'll be good. But we'll also be posting information about uh, the 2CV challenge, um, particularly on our LinkedIn, which is Alitech Systems Limited, and Twitter, which is at Alitech L. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy your evening. Go get some sleep and we will see you all in the morning. <laughs> so lots of useful advice and hints from our panel there. And that was a session we really enjoyed doing and we'd love to do some more in the future. So if you're an event organiser and you think we could come along and host some of your exhibitors for a podcast panel, why not get in touch? We would love to hear from you. So if you were interested in Steve's comments about his 2CV challenge, then please do get in touch with us and we can share details. Incidentally, we have made our pledge and we are asking Steve or his co-driver to don a red Lycra full body suit, including covering the head up, and do the pro extra jumping man star jump on a border crossing somewhere between the Alps and home. So we cannot wait to see the photographs of that. So that wraps up everything for today and we can't wait for our next episode when we will be talking to Marlon Doyley who is a sales manager for the London Vet Show, um, a show that's run by Closer Still Media. But interestingly, Marlon was also a winner of one of the recent exhibition news awards for Best Newcomer into the Industry. So it's going to be a fascinating episode to hear everything from him about his challenges on joining the industry, what he's passionate about, as a young person entering the industry, what he'd like to see changed and his favourite show in the world. So that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Don't forget you can get in touch with us via the website at www.inspiringexhibitors.com. And if you did pick up a copy of The Exhibitionist a couple of weeks ago and you have managed to digest it, we would love a review from Amazon uh, on Amazon from yourself if possible. We've got a couple there already, but every single one helps. So if you've loved the book, please do drop over onto Amazon and leave us a review. If there's anything else you need, please do give us a call and happy exhibitioning. Hop over now to inspiringexhibitors.com to subscribe to our newsletters, blogs and future podcasts, keeping you up to date with industry insight. While there, you can also find out more about our new book, The Exhibitionist, Inspiring trade show excellence. Once again, thank you for listening.